Hi, my friends. It's Miss Megan again. We're going to learn about another type of shark today. Let's learn about shark teeth. Why do sharks have different kinds of teeth and why do they have so many? I'm Jonathan Bird and this is Shark Academy. Different sharks feed on different things, and so shark teeth have evolved along with sharks. Small bottom-dwelling sharks that feed mostly on invertebrates have flattened teeth for crushing. Sharks that feed on fish typically have pointy teeth designed to grab and hold slippery prey so it can't get away, and the prey is swallowed whole. The mako and the sand tiger shark have these kind of teeth. Sharks that feed on larger animals have more saw-shaped teeth designed for taking bites out of larger prey. The white shark, bull shark, and reef sharks have teeth like this. The most extreme example of a cutting tooth is the fossilized tooth of the extinct megalodon shark, kind of like a prehistoric great white that was bigger than any shark alive today, including the whale shark. The megalodon had the biggest teeth of any shark known. This is a set of jaws from a bull shark. And in the front, you can see the active row of teeth that the shark was using. But if you look in the back, you can see, like a conveyor belt, there's a steady supply of replacement teeth ready to go as soon as one of those front teeth would break off or fall out. So the shark had essentially an unending supply of teeth. In this way, sharks never run out of teeth, and they don't need to go to a dentist. It's estimated that some sharks go through 35,000 teeth in a lifetime. If you're interested in shark, that was kind of interesting. You guys only have a little bit of teeth. Sharks have hundreds, maybe thousands of teeth. Okay, remember we're going to talk about 20 sharks. Not all today, though. The first shark was the angel shark, then the basking shark, the black tip reef shark, the blue shark, the bull shark the cookie cutter shark, the goblin shark, the great white shark, the hammerhead shark, the mako shark, the nurse shark. And today we're gonna learn about the Port Jackson shark. Look at that guy, it's kinda cool looking. The Port Jackson shark, they are different looking in many ways. They have a unique color pattern, the shape of their mouths, they have unusual teeth, and they have ridges on their head that look like horns. They are found off the coast of Australia. That's on the other side of the world. They are nocturnal, which means they are active at night and sleep during the day. They like to stay on the sandy bottom and they camouflage themselves by hiding near rocks that are the same color. Some other real pictures of Port Jackson sharks. They're kind of cool. They don't look like normal sharks. Okay, let's watch a video about some Port Jackson. But even the shallow waters of a local beach can be home to a weird shark. A spiraled egg case rolls in the swell of Sydney Harbour. It's the beginning of life for one very weird shark. With its many bays, beaches and rocky headlands, Sydney Harbour is an enormous and rich environment for sea life. So much so that it has its own shark called the Port Jackson shark after the true geographic name of Sydney Harbour. Growing to more than four feet long, the unlikely looking Port Jackson shark is the largest of the heterodont sharks, meaning different teeth. 
instead of a mouthful of knives, the Port Jackson sports a mouth equipped for grinding and crushing the sea urchins, crabs and other shellfish that it preys on. If any shark could be considered a family-minded homemaker, it's the Port Jackson. They seem to be able to unearingly home in on home. Researchers move them miles away from their usual resting spots. They return, like homing pigeons, to their favourite patch of sand. They can migrate more than 500 miles each year. But when it's time to mate and lay eggs, Port Jackson sharks are able to navigate back to the very specific bays that are favoured by the sharks. After mating, two soft corkscrew egg cases are laid. And then, in a single moment, what may be the pinnacle of parental care in sharks. The mother gently picks her egg case up with her mouth and hides it in a crevice. Great care is needed because it can take almost a year before a newborn Port Jackson shark emerges. Almost 90% of the eggs will be eaten before a shark can emerge. And even then, it's no walk in the park for a small shark. But they are not defenseless. Heterodonts are armed with two sharp spines alongside each dorsal fin which may be venomous. Wow, that's a cool kind of shark. You guys go to Australia, maybe you guys can see one. Okay, we're gonna read a story. It's called Gilbert the Great. Today we're going to read Gilbert the Great by Jane Clark. Illustrated by Charles Fouget. From the time Gilbert the Great White Shark was a tiny pup, Raymond the Remora stuck to him like glue. Raymond was always at Gilbert's side. When Gilbert was stuck in the seaweed, Raymond untangled him. When Gilbert got dirty, Raymond cleaned him up. And... When Gilbert lost his first row of teeth, Raymond helped him collect them for the Tooth Fairy. Gilbert and Raymond had lots of fun. They loved to play finball, tide and seek, and sardines. They shared everything. Then one day Raymond told Gilbert that his family had to move across the ocean. I don't want to go. But Mom says I have to, cried Raymond. As Raymond and his family swam away, Gilbert's mother hugged him tight and tried to comfort him. Raymond's my best friend, said Gilbert. Why did he have to go away? It's not fair. I know, said Mom, but his family couldn't just leave him behind. She kissed Gilbert on the snout. Go and play tide and seek with the pilot fish. It will keep your mind off Raymond. But Gilbert couldn't stop thinking about his friend. I want to move with Raymond, Gilbert said. He's moved too far away, said Mom. We have to stay here. Let's go watch the basketball game. The Thrashing Threshers are playing the title Tigers. Who do you want to win? Gilbert looked around. There were remoras everywhere, but none of them was Raymond. I don't care, he said, and he swam off before either side scored a basket. It's my fault Raymond moved, Gilbert snapped as he passed an eel. Last week I called him a sucker. You didn't make Raymond leave, Mom smiled. 
Everyone fights sometimes. The clownfish did their best to cheer Gilbert up, but nothing could make him smile. The next day at school, everyone was very kind to Gilbert. They even gave him an extra long turn on the seesaw. Cheer up, said Marvin the mallet. There are plenty of fish in the sea. There isn't another Raymond, said Gilbert. Gilbert was still sulking when Mom came to collect him from school. It's not the same without Raymond, Gilbert pouted. That night, Gilbert cried and cried and cried, and his warm tears mingled with the cold ocean water. The next morning, Mom took Gilbert gently by the fin and towed him into shallow water. Rocked by the gentle waves, they gazed out at the seashore and the bright blue sky. I hope Raymond's new home is as nice as this, said Gilbert. I'm sure it is, said Mom. I'm hungry, Gilbert said suddenly. We'll go to the wreck, said Mom. Gilbert's eyes lit up. They didn't usually go to the wreck. Mom didn't like him eating junk food. Scrunch, munch, crunch. As Gilbert was biting into a pile of tin cans and bits of old boat, he spotted a small remora crying in the shadows. Gilbert stopped crunching and swam towards her. What's the matter? Gilbert asked. Mom and I moved and I had to leave my shark behind, she sobbed. Now I don't have any friends. My remora had to move, too, said Gilbert sadly. I'm so lonely. Gilbert and the remora looked at each other and smiled wobbly smiles. I'm Gilbert, said Gilbert. I'm Rita, replied the remora. Just then, a ray of sunlight filtered through the deep blue ocean. Gilbert's teeth flashed as he grinned a huge grin. Do you want to play finball with me, Rita? He asked. Sunlight danced in Rita's eyes. I'd love to, she said, and the two new friends swam off to find a ball to play with. The End I liked that story, did you guys? Great job, friends. You guys learned about Port Jackson sharks today. See you next time.